Right, on the explainer tonight, of course, quite a bit of anxiety amongst uh, several Kenyans who've discovered that they are members of political parties without actually having registered to do so. Now, I'll be speaking to the Registrar of Political Parties in just a moment, but um, I thought it interesting to take a look at the actual proper process of recruitment of party members. And this is what we're talking about today. So the reason this is such a big conversation is that members of a party are actually the lifeline of a party. There can be no party without members, right? Which is why this is such a big conversation. And one of the other things uh, that is important to note is that um, on account of this, it's the political parties that have the latitude and decide the criteria for membership, right? Because they're the ones who set their ideology and know what sort of people they are looking for uh, to further that ideology. And on the outside, before we even get into the process of registration of party members, a political party is required by law to make sure that they update their membership list continuously and make sure that it is accurate at all times and that it is available not just for members of the party but for the general public at both the party headquarters and at all party county offices. Now, one of the big questions I guess we were asking ourselves is why would a party want to up their numbers or fudge their numbers? Well, perhaps for the more nascent and newer parties, this would be it because according to the law, any party that seeks to be fully registered needs to have the following. It needs to have recruited as members not fewer than 1,000 registered voters from each of the more than half of the counties. So it would be about 24 counties. So you can see why for them it would be important to get those numbers in order to get themselves fully registered. All right. So that might be one of the reasons that they would be seeking to bulk up their numbers. But if we take a look at the recruitment process itself, it has a few key elements that must be met. First of all, is the party constitution. This must be spelt out to the person who is seeking membership of the party, right? And the party is also required to ensure that they issue a standard party membership card. And I'll be telling you or showing you what that looks like in just a minute. And then once they have done that, then there is a party membership verification form that is signed by both the party and the party member and that is then registered as a document with the registrar of political parties. And it is really up to the party, like we said, to ensure that their list is accurate and up to date at all times and is available for inspection by both members of the public and of the party. It is also important, by the way, for them to indicate, right, the membership fee that has been paid. Now, before we get to this card, I just want to let you know that once you go through that legitimate process of registering to be a member of a party, what does that then entitle you to as a member of a party? Well, a number of things. You can now be fully participating in the party activities, right? So you can campaign for a political party cause. You can contest for leadership within the party structures itself. You will then also be entitled to access the documents and uh, records of the party, as well as also vying for a leadership position on that uh, party. Now, here is what that typical party membership should look like that should be issued to you upon membership. It should have the party logo and the party name. It should have your membership number, your name, your ID or your passport number, whatever you used to register, the date and place of issue, and it should have your signature and that of the recruiter. All right. Now this, there are two documents of this actually. So you get this party membership card and the party keeps a counter for you. That is for their own records. And those are then of course taken to the registrar of political parties. And this is that party membership verification form, which is then lodged with the office of the registrar. Party name, party logo, again, name of county, the member, your occupation, your area of residence, and the party membership card number that we have just shown you previously. So all of these things need to happen for you to be said to be a bona fide member of a registered political party in this country. And all of this is by law. Did you go through any of these processes before you found your name on that list? That is the big question tonight.